Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I want to talk about the dynamics of space fighters. And uh, we're going to do it using Kerbal Space Program and this ship as an example. Now, the subject has become something of a much discussed hot topic recently since the advent of Star Citizen and its Arena Commander. Many people discussed the control system and uh, it was heavily criticized for not allowing you to use lateral thrust without switching out of direct mode and the developers actually posted a really long blog post today on their website specifically discussing the dynamics and how they're really working hard at it and how you know they uh, are simulating everything down to a single thruster and uh, that's good because it means I can take Kerbal Space Program, which also simulates everything down to a single thruster, and uh, demonstrate the physics and how it all works and how it perhaps relates to various sci-fi universes. So uh, what Kerbal Space Program does not have is the really interesting fly-by-wire system. It has a very simple... Uh, system and we're going to demonstrate all this. Now we're going to start out with a, a, the spacecraft in the atmosphere. Uh, this is actually going to be closer to um, you know space planes type fighting. Now we're going to actually start off with the plane in the atmosphere. This is closer to the behavior you see in Star Wars where the spaceships more or less fly like aircraft. Anyway, uh, what I've got here is a plane that's about three tons. This engine here will generate about 120 kilonewtons. So simple mathematics will tell you that it should get about four Gs when I throttle up to 100%. If you look here in this flight engineer window, that's showing you how many Gs that I'm ex uh, experiencing. And the number on the right shows the peak G-force. So just watch this as I hit the spacebar and uh, disable the brakes. The brakes disabled, hit the spacebar, and immediately 4G's linear. I'm just going to throttle back because honestly that is way too much thrust. But you see how that is a very simple uh, example of physics here, right? We are able to generate force directly and it causes an acceleration and it's simple force is equal to mass times acceleration. Or rather in this case acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. Now I'm just going to turn this aircraft over and shed a little bit of velocity here and we're going to try some maneuvering. Now if you played, say, X-Wing Simulator many, many years ago, classic game, but you'll find a lot of the time that you are going to be yawing to turn towards a target. Now, I'm yawing here to the left, and you can see the G-Force indicator jumping up around 2 Gs. You can also see, as I turn from above, the, uh, the tail fins are turning. Now, if I right-click on these things, you can see that these are actually generating lift and they're actually this is also generating lift but these are pushing the spacecraft to the side and generating the turn more or less right there's also some uh, lift coming from the body and it doesn't actually give you the direction of this lift but uh, yeah you know you can in fact turn in a circle using just these vertical control surfaces but it's not particularly efficient in an aircraft because generally the rudder is sitting up above the center of mass so you'll get a kind of roll induced at the same time. Now, how do aircraft really fly in air combat? Of course, they uh, tend to pull up towards the target and immediately if you watch that, you saw that I managed about 9 Gs, which is quite impressive when you consider that the engine is only generating 22 kilonewtons, which means that the engine is on, is currently generating less than 1G worth of thrust, but these wings were able to bite into the atmosphere and provide a lateral force pushing the aircraft in this direction. You know, even then, it's still generating, uh, you know, almost 80 kilonewtons, so that's way more than this engine is generating at this time. And if I set it up right, let's watch the peak force on this as I pull up. Ready? Peak force over 130. So that wing is equivalent to one of these engines at 100% throttle. So if you wanted to take these wings off and generate the same turning force, 
then you would need two of these engines more or less pointed straight up. In fact, you'd probably need about three of these engines, really. Uh, now, the other thing to note is that I can push down and pretty much get similar performance in terms of turning. Uh, the vertical you know, pitch up, pitch down motion is much stronger than the yaw. And of course, that makes for interesting air combat maneuvering, especially when you also consider that the pilot is much happier with positive Gs from pulling up than they would be with negative Gs from pulling down. Negative Gs, you know, makes all the blood rush to your head and you will red out a lot more quickly than you will black out. So that is how, you know, aircraft fly in an atmosphere and how spacecraft are portrayed as flying in many different, you know, very high profile uh, sci-fi series. But of course, this thing is designed like a spacecraft and in fact has jets everywhere and should fly perfectly well in a vacuum. So let's go somewhere where we can demonstrate this. Okay, so now our space fighter is, in fact, in space. It's in a vacuum, right? This is the moon, of course, and uh, that means that whatever way I point the spacecraft, there is no lift being generated by the wings. I can right-click on it and nothing will happen. I am basically a ballistic rock. So the way I stop crashing into that thing in front of me is, well... I have to thrust upwards to avoid myself falling and you can see my vertical speed going upwards. This is more or less the control system you would see in Asteroids, Space War, uh, Oids, Space Duel, all these very early Newtonian physics games where you would basically point your vehicle in whatever way you wanted to go and while you would thrust you would keep going in the other direction, right? So. You can point in one direction, but uh, your thrust will only adjust your velocity vector in that way. And of course, means you can face backwards, you can fly backwards, and if you want to slow down, you point your engines backwards and you fire them up. And of course, you can fly through that and then fly forwards, right? Now, uh, that more or less works uh, in a familiar way. But uh, the next step up, I guess, from this would be uh, the control scheme that I saw in my first 3D games, my first 3D Newtonian games, where you also added a reverse thruster here. So there's my reverse thruster, and you see my surface velocity dropping very quickly. It's kind of limited here. I think it's not quite on the center, but there's me killing my vertical, or my horizontal velocity, and I can do it even better. Oh and the thing is not quite balanced and this is what happens when you simulate every single part of a vehicle you end up with weird stuff like that happening so yeah i've fired my engine and i'm now going backwards that's all well and good so that wasn't warhead and and uh Frontier and Frontier First Encounters. Now actually Frontier First Encounters had uh, lateral engines and vertical engines as well. You just couldn't access them uh, until there was a fan patch that was made to the game. Anyway, uh, that's all well and good. You know, that's the kind of control schemes you might see in, in games. You'd also see in you know, Battlestar Galactica and Babylon 5. But Babylon 5, obviously, with our Star Furies, they went one step further and they added uh, this notion. They added engines in every direction. And that's what this thing has. It has a little ring of engines here. We've got one on the side, you've got two on the top, two in the bottom. And these can, more or less, if I fire them, you see the velocity vector going in different directions. So I can go sideways, I can go the other sideways, I can go to the right. And, of course, it doesn't matter what way I'm pointing, the velocity vector will go in that direction. So, of course, that means I can fire up my engine, adjust my thing, and then turn around and, you know, shoot the guy behind me. Or uh, I can pretend that I'm a real aircraft. And how do I pretend I'm a real aircraft? Well, if you are pretending you're a real aircraft, that is the equivalent of coupled mode in Star Citizen. So... If I turn, well, my velocity vector doesn't turn with me until I start using those bottom engines to actually emulate the force of the wings. Those two little engines will generate roughly the same force as those wings. So that's me flying the thing more or less like a real plane. I'm just pointing my aircraft where knows where it should be and then trying to more or less compensate by... Uh, firing the engines at the same time. 
it's uh, quite difficult to do, which is why you have a fly-by-wire system that does this. Now, of course, we see this behavior in Elite Dangerous, and we see this in Star Citizen. We also see it in uh, Diaspora, you know, the free space expansion that does Battlestar Galactica. So this is not uh, altogether a new thing. Um, and more or less, you know, you can fly at whatever speed. Uh, Elite obviously limits you in speed and has some other stuff to enhance or you know, give it some sort of gameplay, let's say. And I'm not going to necessarily say it's good or bad, I'm just going to say that's what we've got. So there's me doing a U-turn there using the engines. Of course, I can do a U-turn in a completely different way, right? I can fire up my engine, I'm flying along, and I'm like, okay, there's the bad guy, let's uh, turn around. And then fire the engine. Oh, yeah, let's uh, try and kill my velocity. No, no, let's fire the engine. A little bit of fancy flying there, huh? There we go. Firing the engine, of course, it takes a little bit to recover, but there I go, and I'm now flying in the opposite direction. Brilliant. And I can flip point spacecraft sideways and all that other stuff. Now, um... This thing has more engines on the vertical axis than it does on the horizontal axis, so it should be able to turn faster in pitch than it does in yaw. You can, of course, do the same thing in yaw. So I'm going to fire my engine sideways and try to turn the spacecraft to keep the, the velocity vector pointing along that. And there we go. Now flying in that direction and, of course, towards that. So let's pull the nose up, get over that. And I am, of course, doing this all manually, and it is not the easiest thing to actually carry out, let's see. <laughs> I am probably going to crash this at some point. But actually, you know, it it's surprisingly good once you figure out what's going on. And of course, Star Citizen will have the flight computer doing all this for you, and you can turn it off. And of course, Elite, you can turn it off as well. Star Citizen also has another couple of options you can turn off. You can turn off the... Um, the G limiter, which is hard to emulate here, but yeah, the G limiter, if you turn that off, then you can turn much harder and pull more Gs, which can obviously be a useful thing to do in a combat situation. Uh, the other one they have is Comstab, which when you turn it on, it adjusts the way you turn. So I'm just going to come up with an example here. When you have Comstab enabled, it ensures that your velocity vector and your facing vector are coupled. So if I start rotating, then my nose will more or less turn to follow this. I'm more or less manually keeping it on there, but I'm thrusting constantly. So that's how a turn with Comstab would happen, right? But if I uh, disable Comstab, then it decouples the turning from the lateral thrust. So what will happen is I'll start thrusting laterally, but I'll turn and I'll turn faster because uh, this spacecraft is able to adjust its rotation faster than it is able to adjust its uh, velocity. So uh, you would be able, you would slow down perhaps, you would do a bit of drifting, but ultimately you would get back where you were going. So that's what Comstab does. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's the equivalent of turning off traction control on a car, I guess. It lets you kind of drift through corners and things like that, which, as I said, may be useful. It lets you turn your spacecraft so you can aim at a target faster than the G limit would otherwise allow you to. Okay, so we have established that a spacecraft can be made to fly like an aircraft, just by providing thrusters which would replicate the forces produced by the wings. There is a downside to this. As I pointed out, these little thrusters are generating, are very, they're hacked, right? So they're generating roughly 100 kilonewtons of force. That means these little thrusters are generating about the same amount of thrust as that main engine should be. So realistically, these little engines, which I've just attached to the outside, should be roughly the same size as this main engine. That is clearly um, not the case in this case, right? Um, the, the spacecraft in Star Citizen and to a certain extent Elite are built around the notion of one big engine at the back and lots of little maneuvering thrusters. Well, as you can see from this, the truth should instead be... Uh, very large maneuvering thrusters with a small engine at the back. That engine at the back was able to generate, you know, with, with even generating only like 
you know, 24 kilonewtons of thrust in the atmosphere, I was able to get over 250 kilonewtons of lift from those wings just by making them, uh, by, you know, turning against the atmosphere. So if you're going to emulate the behavior of a highly maneuverable uh, aircraft in space, then your lateral engines, your vertical engines, need to be more powerful, vastly more powerful than the main rocket engine. And that, of course, leads to like design problems. People expect spacecraft to have a certain look about them. And if they don't, you know, do they want them? I don't know. Do Are people too convinced by uh, the kind of things they've seen in movies? So, um, that they don't want a spacecraft that doesn't have a big engine at the back. I don't know. I'm not going to answer that. Uh, but I'm telling you that the way these things are generally flying in games is that they're they're not needing that. In fact, people are reporting as a bug that the main engine on the Hornet and the uh, on and the the 300i is firing, even though even though the uh, spacecraft has its engine turned off. And of course, the reason for that is people expect to see the engine firing when it's maneuvering, even if that engine would not be doing anything because it wouldn't be accelerating. It is all a case of mas managing expectations. If you wanted to build a spacecraft which could turn upwards like a fighter jet, it would have big engines pointing downwards. Just like the dropships in the next great starship competition, of course, those were designed to land, so they had big engines pointing downwards. But that really doesn't you know, speak of, you know, agile fighter. So instead we get the 300i, we get the Hornet. And uh, frankly, those look like great ships, but uh, they don't resemble physically correct ships. And frankly, I don't think we need to have physically correct spaceships. But, uh, you know, that's up to you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.